So here we are with all the parts laid out for the tank. These parts have already been match drilled, dimpled, deburred, and cleaned to get them ready for the tank sealing process. So lucky for me, Vans came out with service letter 00070R1.1 dated November 7, 23. This adds a tank inspection fitting to the top of the fuel tank, making it easier to inspect the fuel suction screen during condition inspections. Luckily, I was able to get this ordered and delivered before I started building the tank. This thing's pretty easy to install. All you do is drill a 9 16 inch hole one inch forward of the top edge centered on the tank. Next, you just match drill the fitting bung to the tank. Here I start the process of roughing up all the surfaces that receive sealant. The top and bottom skins have been roughed up where the ribs go. Here I've roughed up the outboard ribs where the doublers go for the mounts and also installed the plug rivet. So before I started mixing up any sealant, I made sure that I had all my tools and supplies laid out ready to go. Then I went back and absolutely triple cleaned all of the parts to ensure they were super squeaky clean and then followed the directions to put the tape on the ribs as specified in the assembly instructions. Here I'm mixing up the sealant cartridge. You have to puncture the valve to allow the part A component to be injected in the part B component. And then you have to slowly introduce the part A into the part B. By pushing the black rod in, they don't want you to put that all in at one time. They want you to disperse it through the entire tube. Next, I use this attachment that goes on my electric drill to connect to the mixer rod and slowly mix the tube by pushing the plunger in and out while spinning. Make sure you do this clockwise, otherwise you will unscrew the mixer rod. Also, make sure it's thoroughly mixed. From here, just following the kit assembly instructions, step one is the inboard ribs and return line bracket and bushing. Make sure the orientation is correct. I do encourage the use of the stick that they suggest in the kit assembly instructions and don't forget that you only Clico certain flanges to the skin at this point. Then it's rinse and repeat for the next set of ribs. Nothing fancy here. And finally, we install the outboard set of ribs. And then they have you Clico all the remaining flanges of the ribs to the skins. Now there's no way around it. Time to get messy by riveting the rib flanges to the top skin. Then I riveted the outboard tank mount doublers to the outboard end ribs. I also put some big old blobs of sealant in the very corners of all of the outboard ribs. Then I riveted the tank filler neck. Be aware the two rivets have to go in backwards. I also riveted the tank inspection fitting bung to the tank. Anywhere that I could, I put extra sealant on the rivet tails of any rivets that I could see on the inside of the tank. Then I riveted the bottom mount plate and fuel line fitting flange to the bottom skin.
Next was riveting on the bottom skin. I had my wife come out and help me as we pried the skin open to lay it down on the tank. Before we did this, we made sure that every corner had big blobs of sealant. Now's pretty much your last chance to inspect everything and make sure you're happy before you go closing the tank out. Next, I installed and sealed the access cover and fuel sender plates to the tank. Next, I installed and sealed the fuel level indicator. Make sure you don't apply any solvent to the lens of that indicator. Ask me how I know. Before your sealant kicks off, ensure to essentially glue the fuel return line fitting to the fuel return line tube. Set it aside for later. So here the tank is all completely sealed up. I just used a MEK substitute to clean the excess sealant away. And now I will let it dry for several days to up to a week before I do a pressure test on the tank. <music>